Hello and welcome. In this video, we are going to take a look at the chain rule for multivariable functions. Uh, so the chain rule is used whenever you have compositions of functions in calculus one. But let's go ahead and start off with an example to motivate why we would need this. So suppose that corn production depends on annual rainfall and the average temperature. So that allows us to symbolically write that C is a function of both the rainfall and temperature. Global warming predicts that both rainfall and temperature depend on time. So rainfall and temperature depend on time. They depend on a third, rather a fourth variable. Suppose that according to a particular model of global warming, rainfall is decreasing at 0.2 centimeters per year and temperature is increasing at 0.1 degrees Celsius per year. Use the fact that at current levels of production, F sub R equals 3.3 and f sub t equals negative five to estimate the current rate of change dc dt. So how much is corn production changing per year at this given instant? So first of all, it might be helpful to note some relationships. So well, that's not what I wanted. We want to start off, first of all, thinking about the fact that corn production depends on two variables rainfall and temperature. And rainfall depends on time, but so does the temperature, right? So rainfall depends on what maybe what uh, time of time of year it is. It depends on what year it is. Same thing with um, temperatures. It's going to vary throughout the year and it's going to vary across years. So first of all, let's try to decrypt what we have here. So rainfall is decreasing at 0.2 centimeters per year. So what we have is dr dt, the rate at which rainfall is changing per year, is 0.2 centimeters per one year. Temperature is increasing at 0, oh, that's decreasing, so that should be a negative. Temperature is de increasing at 0.1 centimeters per year. So what they've given us is the change in temperature per change in time. And we know that that is 0.1 degrees Celsius per one year. We're also given values of current levels of production, F sub R. So another way to write this would be to say F is actually stands for corn production. And that's the partial derivative of corn production with respect to rainfall. So this is actually DC dr. Now the reason here we're using the regular calc 1 notation and here we're using calc 3 is because C depends on two variables, but R and T both only depend on one variable. So it's not necessar necessary to use the partial derivative uh, notation for dr dt. So we have DC dr currently whoops, this should be capital R, is 3.3. And we could give that units, we could say that's 3.3 uh, units of production per inch of rain. So DC, DR, I'll kind of write this over here, is going to be, now we don't know how corn production is measured, so we'll just say that it's 3.3 units and that is per one inch of rain. DC dt, that's another way of writing the change in corn production right here per change in temperature. And we know that that's going to be negative five. That again is in units of production that could be in bushels or pounds or tons. But now this is per t and t is measured in temperature in degrees Celsius. So what we expect is that for uh, right now, if temperatures were to rise by one degree Celsius, we would expect a decrease of five units in production. If rainfall goes up by an inch, we're able to yield an additional 3.3 units for every inch that we get. But what we know that's happening is both of these things are going to contribute to corn production. But um, if I have that there are 3.3 units that are going to be produced per one inch of rain. And I, or I'm sorry, not inches, but this should be centimeters per one centimeter. Then 
I need to ask myself, well, how much rain do I expect to get over the coming year? Well, we're expected to have a decrease of 0.2 centimeters over the coming year. So we're not going to get a, an increase of 3.3 units. One, because we're not talking about one full centimeter, but we're talking about a, a 0.2 or one fifth of a centimeter. But if we look at the units, what we want to get is we want to get um, DC, DT, how much corn production we're going to yield per year just based on rainfall alone. And this is for one year. So if we do the dimensional analysis here, we're going to have the centimeters cancel out. And so we're actually going to get a decrease in production because we are getting a decrease in rain. So a one fifth of 3.3 units is how much of a decrease we're going to get in our uh, corn production. So we're going to say that uh, DC DT, and again, right now we, we can just go ahead and say DC DT like this because uh, at the end of the day, corn production is ultimately a function of time. And we're going to approximate this. We're going to say, well, this is due to rainfall. This right here is due to rainfall. The rain effect. And then we're going to add to that the effect of corn production due to temperature. So here I have that I'm I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lose five units of corn for every one degree Celsius increase, but I see that my temperature is, is going to go up by 0 0.1 degrees Celsius over the course of one year. So for a whole degree Celsius, I would expect a drop of five units. For a tenth of a degree Celsius, I'll only expect one tenth of five unit decrease. And again, I'll notice that the units here cancel out and the degrees Celsius go away. And what I'm left with is again, the units per year of corn production due to the effect of temperature. So the corn production is going to change based on two things, the rain effect plus the temperature effect. And so when I estimate this, 3.3 um, times negative 0.2 plus negative 5 times 0.1 is going to give me a, now this is in units per year, so I expect negative 1.16 units of corn in the coming one year. So what I can say is that I expect corn production to drop by, uh, by sorry, 1.16 units in the coming year. Now what this leads us to is a, is a more generalized approach. We said that we wanted to calculate DC, DT. And in order to do that, we had to multiply two things together here the first one being, we see that that's DC, DR, DC, DR, and we've had to multiply that by the DR, DT. And similarly, we had to add to that the effect of the temperature, which was DC, DT, that's the uh, negative five degrees, five units per degree Celsius. And we had to multiply that by the change in temperature per change in time. And again, we, we, we observe that our units cancel out, our DRs cancel here, our DTs cancel, and what we're left adding together is DC DT plus DC DT. And as a result, we get the net change. You can think about this as the net change in production per year. So it's beautiful how the units work out. And this is in effect the chain rule. Okay. And it helps to have this diagram because I want to see what all the relationships are and what ultimately is the driver of all the change that I observe up here and see it all boils down to uh, the unit of time. Now, it wasn't really important that we had to call these variables C, R, and T. We could go back to our standard notation of using Z, 
which is a function of two input variables, X and Y. And so there are therefore two rates related to Z and X and Z and Y. We have DZ, DX and DZ, DY. Again, we're using the partial notation here because uh, Z depends on two input variables. So that's why we use the partial notation, just to indicate that there's more than one input variable. But then because X and Y are variables that only depend on one other underlying variable, in this case, little t, we will have dx dt and dy dt. Again, since t is the only underlying dependency for x, we don't need the partial derivative operator. Would it be wrong to use it? Not necessarily, but it's more precise to stick with single variable functions using single variable notations and multivariable functions using multivariable notation. So this could actually generalize quite nicely. If I had a function that depended on three variables, x, y, and z, and that x, y, and z are all functions of t, show a relationship diagram similar to this one for dz, dt, and then write a formula for computing it by extending the chain rule. So the first thing I want to do is I just want to lay out my dependencies. I have z, which is a function of three variables, x, y, and z. And then x, y, and z are all functions of one independent variable called little t. So that's going to give me uh, one, two, three, four, five, six underlying derivatives. Three of those will be partials, dz, dx. I'll have dz, dy. And then I'll have dz, um, Ooh, you know what? I should probably be, be a little bit more cautious here. We maybe don't want to call this variable z. We want to maybe call this um, w. We're, we're kind of using z twice. So let's call this uh, w up here. And then let's change our dz here to dw. And so we'll write dw dx. We'll write dw dz. And we'll write dw dy. Now again, we don't need the partial notation here because x is only a function of t, y is only a function of t, and z is only a function of t. Now when we piece these together, you can see how the relationships hold. We, we can multiply down the line to get the correct units. So to get our estimate of dw dt, we're going to take, it's the contribution of to the change in w caused by x. So we'll have dw dx. But notice that right now those are not the same units. So to get the same units, if I multiply this by dx dt, I'll have my dx's cancel out. And now I need to do the effect of the change in w due to y, which is going to be dw dy times dy dt. Plus, I have to get the change in w due to z, which is dw dz, multiplied by how z is changing with respect to time. And there's our formula. You can extend this to as many variables as you have by following this idea of the chain rule. You see that all of these are individual dw dt's. Again, the fact we're mixing partial and non-partial, these are this symbol means the same thing as this. So it's fair to just say this is now dw dt, because again, at the end of the day, w is a function of time.